everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today I want to dye some yarn inspired a bit by oxidizing copper. I think that this could be a really fun colorway, and I have an idea of how I may want to go at it that may or may not work, but we'll see and just have fun trying to head that direction. Uh, but before I talk more about the project, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Addie. Addie, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope that you're going to love the way your yarn turns out. Speaking of the yarn, today we're going to be dyeing Knitpick's Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn. This yarn is non-superwash, it is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. I consider it a workhorse yarn, it felt beautifully, uh, but it also, you have to intentionally felt it, I haven't, I don't think I've ever felted it from the dyeing process, which is a very good thing. And so I'm thinking that if I take like a burnt orangey color like saffron spice, and then I bring in some like green and aqua tones. The mix of that will bring in some brown tones that you can sometimes see. And I don't know for sure if this is gonna work the way it works in my head, but I'm very excited to try. And so I'm gonna go ahead and pre-soak all of this yarn in uh, just some plain tap water. We will add acid eventually, but I'm gonna go ahead and pre-soak it for I think about at least an hour before we go ahead and start trying to dye it. And while we wait, let's go look at the colors. I don't know if I was talking about this on camera, but I knew there was a color in my brain that I forgot about that is a wonderful copper color. Saffron Spice is, a, it's a bit more of a burnt orange than a bright orange, but it's still very orange. Fawn, in combination, will bring in some more of the coppery hue, at least a bit. <laughs> and then we have our Bright Aqua and Spearmint Breeze, which I'm intentionally not looking at pictures of oxidizing copper. I'm really thinking more in my head about it because I don't want to obsess over the colors too much. I want to take this palette and have fun and hopefully we're going to find something that feels like oxidizing copper. What I'm thinking is to do some immersion speckles on our yarn today. And since the yarn is non-superwash, the speckles are going to blow out. The colors are going to blend, but maybe then we can still feel some elements of all three if I don't put them too close together. This may not work. We may end up with more speckles when that's not what we're going for. It may blend way more than what I'm anticipating, but this is my plan. Into my four inch deep full size catering steam pan, I am gonna bring over our 300 grams of yarn, even though I'm only planning on dyeing 200 grams in the main colorway. But I'm gonna wanna add acid to the third one because one of them will be the yarn mop, because as we're dyeing our yarn, I will have dry dye powder on my gloved fingertips that I'm gonna wanna do something with. <laughs> okay, so to this, I've got some water here. It's eight cups of water, let's add four. Tablespoons of white vinegar. And it was not mixed in this container, but we can mix it a bit on the yarn and then get a feel of, I definitely want more. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna put in four tablespoons of white vinegar into my jar, fill that up with water, and then bring it over. Now, normally, if I wanted to create a speckly colorway, what I would do would be to have a lot less water volume. Uh, and I think that when I go in and remove one skein, the water volume is still gonna be pretty high. So I think what I'm gonna do is get rid of my pre-soak and then use the skein that'll be our yarn mop as like a sponge to remove some of the water and put it in here. And I can always add this water back in but I realized that I didn't want to just add it to other water and dilute it further because now we have water that has the exact same proportion of acid as what we originally had here in our dye bath. 
And so this is one of the problems with adding water and things when I'm starting with 300 grams of yarn in here when I'm planning on removing one. And this is just gonna be just off camera in a aluminum pan. But anyway, I want more water in here than I would use if I was just gonna go for speckles because I do want the colors to spread. I just don't want them to spread too much. So now I'm gonna take this to the stove and start heating things up. I'm on my gas stove across two burners. We are a little bit steamy. That should pass. I just reduced the heat. And now I'm gonna go put on my Deluxe River respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves so we can start playing around with this yarn. I'm gonna start really slow in that all I'm gonna do is add a little bit of each color. So this is the, uh, I think it's a Spearmint Breeze. Speckling a little on. Now the main thing you want to do and to keep in mind is to make sure your fingers are really dry before you go back in the dye container. This is some bright aqua. Okay, now I'm coming in with some fawn. I'm doing a little bit more of it. I think it's a color that probably breaks. Uh, with the speckles immediately, I saw some nice reddish tones in there. And then we have our saffron spice. Now my gut tells me that the saffron and the mint are going to be more accent colors and I'm going to do a lot more with the aqua and with the fawn. But it also depends on how the colors spread out. And so this is how our yarn mop looks right now. Very, very cute. And I think what I want to do is just wait 10 minutes. And in that time, we'll get a feel of how much the colors are spreading and how intense those colors are. But even right now, everything has spread out a lot. Now, initial thoughts, the mint and green are too bright for what I want, but in combination with these other colors, as we layer things together, they will be more muted and I think that'll be really good. Now, I think we could have ended up with something muted if we stuck with just the three bright colors, but I think that this fawn is going to help and bring in some of those oxidizy feelings to it too. So I'm very excited with this palette, but I'll see you in what's now nine more minutes. Obviously in real time right now, me can't tell how much things have spread. Uh, just because it looks similar to what I saw before. But what I'm going to do is flip the yarn because the other thing I'm curious about, there we go, is how much spread we have onto the other side of our yarn. And it varies from a little to a lot. Um, and the good thing really is that it did not take very long to see that spread. Now, once I put my respirator back on and we go to start speckling, we will want to make sure that we wait before flipping the yarn because if the dye hasn't really set in place yet, then it really will spread. But we have a good shot of getting colors to blend this way. I think when the fawn color is light, it is a beautiful coppery color. And we can slowly build up the color. And I think that eventually when I flip, I will try to put like colors on top of each other, but this fun, I'm speckling on lightly all over a bit. Now, the more color I add in any given area, the more things will spread, which I know is pretty obvious, but it's always just worth pointing out. Now, we could end up with a few sharp speckles. This is the bright aqua I'm bringing in here. We could end up with some speckles on here in the end. Uh, it's possible that not all the dye will spread out a lot, but my gut says that we will probably see a fair amount of spread. Now I'm going to need to be careful because it's very steamy and it's very humid here in July in Massachusetts. And so the dyes are really sticking to my gloves. I'm going to bring in little bits of this green, even though I think that the aqua is a bit of a better choice. 
I'm just doing a few pops of it on both skeins. Ideally, you want to leave your dye containers open for as short a period of time as possible because if you get moisture in there, that could alter the powders a bit. It could let things clump. But anyway, my hope is I bring in some of the saffron spice because I think that we want to pump up the orange and some of these brown areas. But I'm still going really light. My hope is that we'll see similar amounts of spread here with what we saw before. And then we can flip the yarn and add dye to the other side, sticking with similar colors and similar patches to kind of deepen them a bit. But the goal is to build up the colors really slowly. And now let's wait 10 minutes. This is so pretty. There are some dark spots, but I think it will continue to soften as we go. And once I flip, you can see how the colors have already started to spread and soften and it looks great. So what I'm going to do now is add back a little bit of this water I removed at the beginning and we're going to carry on. One of the reasons why I mentioned that I want to add the color slowly and build it up over time is that if I add too much dye in any one spot and then don't go in to help it dissolve, the dye could clump there or we could end up with a really saturated big speckle, which isn't what I'm going for. I don't want a pastel colorway, but I want the colors to spread and blend a bit, and so that might mean doing more rounds with less dye to slowly build that up and try to keep some of these patches a little more localized. But again, we'll see where things go. Once I was satisfied with all of the color I added, I let everything heat for 30 minutes from the last time I added dye. I hope I don't end up wishing that I added more color because I really like where we are and I think I'm going to stop. But as we're waiting our 30 minutes, here's our yarn mop. I'm gonna take her and pop her in a steamer basket to steam set for 30 minutes while we let this yarn wait for 30 minutes. And I also figure that while we're waiting, we can take a closer look at the yarn and some of those colors. I would say the saffron spice is actually giving us the most speckles and the least spread, but it's almost like, <laughs> like something landed on a copper roof and scratched away part of the oxidized spot to bring some of that coppery color back. Super pretty. I love it, I absolutely love it. And Addie, I hope you do too. But now I figure I'll leave us here so that way in 30 minutes, well, really 28 more minutes, then we can see if things look the same or different. 30 minutes later, and I need to go and see my instant replay. It could be like the change of the day and the white balance in my kitchen, but it seems to me like things feel more yellow and maybe a hair more muted overall, which I'm not mad about because I think that that's making this feel even more coppery. Oh my gosh. Now, another thing that could be fun is to start with the like pale blue green and do that all over and then add the other color on top but I really like what we have here and for all we have spread spread and blend we still have definitely have some speckles in here which is fun and now as for our yarn mop I what I'm most curious about as I lift this up is the water going to be clear oh that's hot Yeah, that's clear. Now here, the colors are a little more spread because I blended the colors on, but you can see them a little more true when compared to our original colorway. I think they paired nicely together. But anyway, I'm gonna let the yarn cool completely, completely, completely to room temperature before we wash it. I don't want any felting. We are gonna wash all of this yarn together in cold water 
And the reason why we wanted to wait for the yarn to be dry, 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 not dry, dry, cold, 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 is that if it's warm, when you have your, your, your wool fibers in your yarn, when it warms up, they relax a little bit. And so then if you cool it off really quickly, you could shock the fibers and rather than sort of settling back into place, they can get tangled. Uh, which then gives us the problem and can be the start of felting. Uh, because felting is the dis is disordering the fibers. But anyway, I'm being gentle, but I know that this yarn can handle a little bit of love. Now there's a hint of some yellow in there. I didn't see any left in the dye bath, but maybe there could be a hint in there. I'm not immediately concerned. Let's fill this back up. All right, and let's see how we're doing. Oh, we're good. That's good. All right, I'm probably gonna rinse it one more time to get out the rest of the soap, but then I'm gonna pop the yarn into my spin dryer and hang it up to dry so we can see the finished yarn. And I know, unfortunately, it's gonna be lighter than this, but I think I might still it uh, because I really like it now and didn't want to keep going because I didn't want to blend things too much. So let's cross our fingers and well now you can see the finished dry yarn. You know these colors didn't really spread quite as much as I had expected but we definitely had enough a little bit of spread and blend so I'm absolutely getting those oxidizing copper kind of vibes in here. And in fact, especially looking at a copper roof that was in my neighborhood, and there's a little bit of like rust color still. I don't know if copper rusts. I thought it oxidized. I don't know. Uh, but there was some rust on it, and I was like, yep, I'm feeling really good about where this one ended up. And Addie, I really hope you love it too. I don't often do yarn mops on non-superwash yarn, but you can see how on here we absolutely preserved some of those colors that we had. They didn't muddy and blend, which you could still look at this and see the inspiration of the oxidizing copper, but we needed things to muddy a little bit for the colors to ring a little bit more true to our inspiration. But now this is making me think, should I use a non-superwash wool as a yarn mop more often? It isn't as ideal as superwash because a lot of superwash yarns will not just sort of soak up like a sponge the dye, but they'll actually start binding to the dye with some acid at room temperature. And that's not the case with the non-superwash yarn. I think I would go through a lot more yarn mops uh, if I was doing that, but I think that this mop right here is really stunning and I'd love to create more of them. So you let me know, which do you prefer, the speckled yarn uh, or our mop? Addie, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope that you're going to love your yarn and that you've enjoyed watching me dye it. If you want to learn more about how you can become a lab partner like Addie, uh, go and check out the listings in the Chemist Creations Etsy shop. And if they are sold out, then don't worry, send me a message and I can add you to a waiting list and I'll message you once I open up more slots. Addie, thank you again. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I haven't been dyeing non-superwash yarn as often as I used to. I mean, in general, I lean more towards superwash. I love the way it soaks up color so fast. But honestly, I hand wash almost all of my hand knits. I cannot think of a single one that I tend to toss in the washing machine. And so, therefore, that superwash quality is not that important to me for a lot of the things that I'm making myself. So please let me know down in the comments. Do you work with more superwash or non-superwash yarns? What's your preference and why? Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss new videos. This is the biggest way to help support the content here and it's free. And if you take the time to give a video that you've watched a thumbs up or leave a comment, this all helps tell the algorithm that you enjoyed the content and so then they're more likely to recommend it to someone else. If you're looking for other ways to support the channel, I do have a Patreon, uh, and you can find me in many places on social media where you can follow me as well. I'll have links to everything down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.